Little wins, right? Yeah. I did it, and there's Tom. Secret play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. If you are a beginning user of Magic's Movie Edit Pro 2015 Plus, this tutorial will show you all the steps to make a complete movie. Now I highly recommend you get the Plus version of Magic's Movie Edit Pro 2015. The Plus version has some extra goodies like templates and effects and free software that you don't get with the regular version. I think the Plus version is only offered on Magix.com over the internet. I haven't seen it in stores. Usually they just have the plain version. Uh, so that's my recommendation. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and launch Magix Movie Edit Pro 2015 Plus by double clicking the icon. Now that it's running, we could load an existing project here by pulling down this drop-down and picking a previous project. Also, you can choose a movie template by clicking here and picking a movie template from this list. Now I'm not going to cover movie templates in this beginner tutorial, but you can find more information about them on magix.com. Or, in this case, we're just going to create a new one. I'm going to keep the automatic date and just type MEP 2015 plus practice. All right, I'm going to click OK. And now a new project is created, and we have a Movie Edit Pro 2015 plus here. That's the program name. And then beside that, we have the project name, which I just typed in with the file extension MVP. Now let's go ahead and save our project just to make sure we have it saved on the hard drive. So I'm going to go up here to the File tab and do Save Project. I believe you could also use the Save icon here. There's our name that we typed in previously. And we'll just go ahead and click Save. And we'll probably want to do that periodically to make sure we don't lose anything that we create. Okay, let's start by bringing some video objects into the arranger down here at the bottom. Now, we want to be in the right mode for the arranger. Now, there's four icons right up here for the different modes. The first one is the storyboard mode, and then you have the scene overview mode, and the timeline, and the fourth one is the multicam mode. Multicam mode in 2015 now has the ability to do four cameras, so you can have four cameras in that. But that's more advanced. I won't get into that right now, and personally I don't use it very much anyway. So we want to be in the timeline mode, and that's this one right here. So I'm going to click that, put us in the timeline mode. All right, now let's drag in some video objects. Now there's two ways you can do that. One way is you can drag the objects from the file browser, or you can get it right here from the media pool, which is underneath the import tab. So let's look at the file browser. This is Windows File Browser. Now I have uh, a bunch of objects in here. Two of them are camera angles. So I have a main camera and then a close-up camera. I also have uh, some screen captures that I did to show off the software. And uh, then I have three tracks with voice overlays. So this is going to be an interesting project. What this actually is, is uh, objects that I'm going to use to make the box opening video. And you've probably already seen the box opening video for Magic's uh, Movie Edit Pro 2015 Plus. But if you haven't, you can see it on my channel. But that's what I'm creating right here. And so this is going to be interesting because uh, it's a beginner video, but I am going to show how to do two camera angles and also some voice overlays and screenshots. So that ought to be quite interesting, and I don't think it'll be too hard. It'll still be a beginner video. So let's start by bringing in those video objects. That I'm going to do the two camera angles. Now I'll bring in one from both 
both of these windows just to make it interesting. So I'm going to take camera two here, just drag it in and put it on track one. And I'm not going to adjust it. I'm just going to say don't adjust. So I'm going to keep the project resolution and not adjust the project resolution to the video. I'm going to say don't adjust. And then I'm going to bring in camera one. Well, let's bring uh, camera one in from the media pool here under the import tab. So let me get back over here. Get camera one. There it is. And we'll just drop that on track two. Now, interesting thing. You would think that the top track would take precedence over the bottom track. So you'd think, well, I'm looking at the top track right now as I... I drag the marker. But actually I'm looking at the bottom track. That's the way Magic's Movie Edit Pro works. The track that's on the bottom takes precedence over the tracks above it. So what you're viewing right now is the bottom track and the top track is being covered up by the bottom track so you can't see it. Even if I highlight it you still can't see the top track. One way you can see it though is, a, is if I mute the track underneath it. I'll mute this bottom track. Now you can see the top track. So you can see why I put camera 2 at the top because this is a camera I'm not going to show very often. I'm just going to show it when I want to show a close-up of what's going on, like a close-up of the box or something like that. Then I'll switch to this camera. And uh, most of the time I'm going to be on the bottom track showing us talking about the product. Now this brings a question about you know where am I going to get the audio from? Well in this case I don't have you know a boom mic or, or room mic or anything like that. All I have is these two cameras. So what I decide to do is to get the audio from the close-up camera because it's right next to us. And so we'll take the audio from that and we can add a little audio from the bottom one just for ambiance, some of the you know sound in the room, the echo or whatever. We can add that in if we want to, but that's just a little caveat. So in order to use these two tracks together though, we need to synchronize them. And uh, that's what we're going to do next. So to synchronize these two video tracks, we need to use the audio from each one to align them. So let's go ahead and create the audio waveforms for each one. Let's do the top one first. We'll go ahead and left click that and highlight it and then we'll right click and we'll get this context sensitive menu. Go up to audio functions right here and then click on create waveform. You'll see a progress bar go across the bottom right here as it's creating the waveform. And then you'll see the waveform appear. Now let's do the next track. We'll highlight that one. Go up to Audio Functions, Create Waveform, and we'll do that one as well. Okay, now there's a couple of buttons down here, a plus and minus button, and that allows you to zoom in on the, uh, ver the vertical part of the arranger. So I'm just going to hit the plus button and that just makes the tracks a little larger so we can see the audio waveforms. And you can kind of see how we might align them manually. We can just go ahead and there's a point in here where I clap my hands to get started right there. You can see it in the preview window right here. And it makes a little bit of a sharp sound and then I say synchronizing. So that's how I usually make my clapboard. So let's zoom in on the clap sound down here so we can try to align the two tracks. Uh, we can use this plus button right down here that uh, zooms it in vertically. And now we have it zoomed in. Let's use this key to zoom it horizontally. There's a plus and minus right here. Now let's see if we can see that area where I did it. Okay, the clap sound is right in this area. Okay, one, two, three. 
So you can kind of see that spike right there. So you can see the same spike or same pattern up here on this track. So what we need to do is just drag this track over until it aligns with the first one. Until those two spikes are aligned. I'm looking right here. I move the marker over. So right there. We can zoom in a little more with the plus key. Yeah, they're looking they're looking pretty well lined up. And you can test that by playing the two tracks and see if there's an echo in there. If there's too much of an echo, then it's a little bit out of alignment. One, two, three. Now that sounds really good. So they're lined up just fine. Okay, let's use this double arrow key here to zoom the uh, tracks to the timeline. So I'll click that. And when I do that, you can now see that the video just fits in the timeline. And the reason I did that is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, chop off the end of the video here. Uh, I probably don't want to start. I probably want to chop it where, okay. right where I say OK and get ready to start. Okay. Yeah, right in there somewhere. Okay, so to delete a section of the video, what you do is highlight the track, and then there's a razor blade tool right up here. And uh, you can just click that, and you'll see it cuts the track right there. And I'll do the same thing to the bottom track, as we want to trim them so they're the same size. So let's just trim that track as well. Now we can delete that leftover section by just pressing the delete key on the keyboard or you can right click on it and then just go ahead and delete object like that. I'm going to press the delete key on the keyboard for the next one. So that's both ways you can do it. Now a little trick. Say we want to move these two objects over to the side here. Now I could just drag one at a time like this and then bring the other over. But there's another way. Say they were both right here like that. I wanted to bring them to the beginning of the timeline. What you can do is hit this. There's some buttons up here and these are mouse mode buttons. This is the, for just like a individual or object mouse mode. And this is for the whole track mouse mode and this is for multiple tracks so what I'm going to do is click on multiple track mouse mode we were on just a single object mouse mode now I can highlight just one of the tracks and it'll drag all of them together see that so it moved all of them and if I want to go back to just moving one I just click this the object there or if I had more than one object on a track, I could hit the track mouse mode and move all the objects on that one track at the same time. All right, now let's go down here and hit our double cursor again, make it fit the timeline. And there we go. So now the two tracks are synchronized. Now I just want to show you another way to align these two tracks together. What you can do is if they have the same audio in them, you can actually select both tracks. I just left clicked and drew a marquee around both tracks. Little box there. Selected both of them. Now, what you can do is right click on the top track here, go to audio functions, and go down to where it says align other audio objects with this track. And then if you do that, presto, they're now aligned. Now here's something you might want to know. It's not really necessary for beginners, but it might come in handy someday. And that's that the timeline view is actually a tabbed view. And there's a plus button right here and you can click on that. And when you do that, you can add an extra tab. And this gives you another workspace on the timeline where you can do some editing or practice with effects without disturbing your original video. 
and if you don't need it anymore you can just right click and do remove movie from project and delete movie and then it's gone now the reason I showed you that is you can also use it to import another project the way you do that is you go up to file and then open and then you can pick another project so I'll go ahead and pick the box opening right here and open that project and it says you can close the current project or add a new project well I'm gonna add a new project and it'll put it on one of those tabs okay so now it's on this tab right here and this is the other one that we were working on the original one now if I want to switch these tabs around I can right click on a tab and then you can do sort films and we can move this one to last position like that now we've got the movie that uh, that we're working on right here and the one I just loaded is on the second tab that way so that works out pretty good now you can use this arrow key right here to sort your projects like I did before or you can choose one of the movies from right here one of the tabs so that's what that arrow does now another thing that you might use and this is probably be used more often there's actually a slider down here at the bottom and you can grab the edge of it to shrink or magnify your tracks your project like that which is basically the same thing is this horizontal zoom over here on these two buttons plus and minus uh, but you can also if you're zoomed out say you're zoomed way out like that you can also grab the middle of this slider and move around in the movie like that okay now on this second tab here I've opened up the box opening project which is really what ours will look like when we get done so this is the finished product this is our our goal to make it look like this so what I have here is we start out with introducing ourselves that's this movie segment and then I split the video because there's a section I wanted to cut out and made a little fade right here and I'll show you how to do that and then uh, John starts opening the box and then we have a splice where he shows the product then we go to a close-up of the product and that's from our second camera which is up top here we were looking at the bottom camera right here and then we switch to an insert where I took a, a screen capture of the product in action and it has a voice overlay underneath it which is just audio right here and I've cut some sections out of that out to shorten it up a little bit then the next thing we go to is bringing out the second product and showing a close-up of that and then another insert where we have a screenshot of operating the product so we just repeated the the sequence the sequence twice and then the third sequence is we bring out the third product and this time we don't show a close-up or or a screenshot we just set it down on the desk and conclude the video so that's what our goal is and we'll be making some of these splices and I'll just show you how to do it I'll show you the first few and then it just basically repeats so you'll get the idea when I do it so let's switch back to our movie the first thing we're going to do is splice it right about here where I hand the box over to John well let's just go ahead and save our project to make sure we protect all the changes we just made so we'll just do save project and that's done so we're safe now you probably won't see me using this uh, slider down at the bottom too much because I like to move my marker and then zoom around it like say I wanna splice it right here where I hand the box over to John uh, what I'll do is I'll put the marker right at that section and then I'll just hit this uh, plus key over here in the bottom right hand corner and you'll notice it zooms around the marker kind of keeps the marker in view 
and you can use the minus key to reduce it back down. Okay, so that's the section we want to be in. Now we can play it and listen to the audio. In this box, we think. But we're going to do a box opening to find out. Okay, John, take it away. Okay, so I'm going to remove the part where I hand it over to John, where I say okay. Okay, John. So I'm going to make a splice. Actually, going to go ahead and uh, trim it right there, cut it. So I'm going to use my razor blade tool like this and split. Okay, so now I've split both of these. Both tracks have been split. And uh, I also want to mention that I have the magnet highlighted right here. And that's my snap to grid so that uh, if I move some of the tracks when I bring them back they'll snap right to the end of the other one instead of you know overlaying it it just uh, butts up against it and snaps to it that way so that's an important feature if you overlay it like this you'll cause a fade which we're going to use in a little bit okay now let's move ahead to the next section Actually, we could just leave that out. I think that's what I did. And I just go right here. Because I have this part where it says, I say, we're going to find out. And then we'll go to this. And so I'm going to do my splice there. Now, I don't want either one of the tracks highlighted. So I can just make the cut on both of them at the same time. Click the arrow, split again. And now I can remove this section by just highlighting it and pressing the delete key on the keyboard. Now because I have this uh, selected right here, my, my mouse mode will move all of the tracks at once. I'll just put my marker over here. But when I grab it, all of the tracks move at one time. <clears throat> okay, now let's go ahead and uh, make a little fade there too. We'll just go ahead and cross it over so when we play it we get a transition did you see that I might could make that window a little bigger I don't know but uh, you can grab these and stretch them like this and make your window a little longer and then I could uh, reduce my track size down a little too so you can still see both tracks and uh, maybe right there. You can play around with it yourself and just see what's most comfortable for you but there you have it and now we have that little fade in or transition like that. Okay let's just go ahead and save that. You notice I go ahead and save my project every so often just to make sure that I have that there. Now there are some undo and redo keys here. Like if I was to undo what I just did, I could do this, just keep clicking that, and eventually it would undo all of my changes back to where, you see? And now I can go forward with the redo. And there we're back. But if for some reason the program locked up or something like that. It sometimes happens. Not very often, but if it does, you can go back and just reload it because you've saved it. So that's that's important to know. Okay, let's move on to the next splice. Now if we go back to the finished movie, you can see I've made a couple of cuts right here and removed some material. And that that happens right about in this section. So you can see there, I basically removed this. So after I say we're supposed to get three products, what have we got in there? I've removed some material. So if we go back to this one, let me <clears throat> shrink this down a little bit again. There we go. 
and we'll play it. Okay. So what do we got in there? And I make another cut right there. And then I go forward some more. So what I'm doing is remove the part where I gave him some direction and told him to tell about it. So I can just remove that section, take that out, and then slide this over, and then we'll move forward. So I wanted to remove the part where I first started about, uh, first talked about getting the plus version because I'm going to cover that right after he talks. So if we get right here, so after he says plus, I just cut it there. Again, I don't want to have that top one highlighted because I don't want to just cut that one. I want to cut them both. So there we go, and then he's going to start to talk. So I want to get that part where he talks about it supporting 64-bit, and then I'll just remove this section. And move these in. And these all slide together, like I said, because I have the multi-track mouse mode on right here. If you just want to move one object, it would be this arrow. If you want to move all the objects on one track, it would be this one. All objects on multiple tracks would be the one I'm on right now. Okay, now we're going to move along. So you can see we've got it spliced similar to what this one looks like. There's the two splices we just made. You can see that on the finished product. And we make another splice up here what, where we're going to do the close-up. Okay, so if we go back to the other one and we move ahead, I'm going to use the slider now and move ahead here. Now, where was that? Okay, now this is where I start reaching for the close up camera. I don't want that to be in there, so I'm going to cut it right there again. And then you can see me reaching for the camera, and I'm talking about it right there. So where do I start talking? Oh, it's say plus right on the front of the so that's the little section I'm going to remove because we don't need the part where I'm reaching for the camera. And then we can move this back. So then the whole thing will look like. Now. Why didn't it show the close-up view? Well, that's because it's still showing this bottom track. So what we want to do is go ahead and we're going to go ahead and turn the video down on this bottom track to reveal the top track, which is the close-up. We're going to do that next. So now we're going to make another splice and we're going to show the close-up camera. So we've got to find the place where we want to make the splice. Now one way we can do it is we can hit the mute button right here on this bottom track and that'll reveal the top track. And now we can see the box and judge about where we want to make the splice. But we might not, we definitely want to do it back here before it disappears. But let's just listen to the sound and see maybe that'll tell us. So we probably want to So I'm going to say it's somewhere in that range cuz I don't know it might be it might be up to $80 but I don't know. So I'm going to cut that part out right there. Maybe up to 
All right, so I'm going to do a splice there. Split. All right, now what we're going to do next is I'm going to unmute this track. And what I'm going to do is grab this handle right here, which is the video handle. This is actually the audio handle down here at the bottom for the audio. So you can adjust the audio level there, like this, and slide it up and down. I like this new slider that they added to this, this version. It's nice and big and easy to see. It didn't used to pop up like this before. You had to deal with looking at this tiny slider. Okay, but we're going to work with the video slider. So I'm going to take the video level down all the way, like that. Now when we play it, you can see that the, the video underneath is revealed, or the video on top, actually. Okay, but you can see this is kind of dark. So what we can do there is go up to Effects, right here, and right now I'm going to go to Video Effects, Brightness Contrast, and at this point I can adjust this gamma and just bring the brightness up. Another thing I could do is uh, change the contrast, like that. But you can just uh, adjust it to where you feel you want it. Now, if you get it all messed up where you think you can't get it undone, you can just hit this double arrow right here, and it'll put it back to default so you can start again. So if we run the gamma up, say, to 40, and then the brightness up just a little bit. Now let's take the contrast down instead. I think the contrast would be better like that. So we can see the the plus right here on the box. All right, now let's go forward. So it's going to say plus right on the front of the box, right in that area. Okay, so that's how you use that effect. Now let's go down and do the lens correction. Now you'll see in here that the whole thing looks like it's got a fisheye effect to it. You can see it back here in the windows. You can take this lens effect which is under Effects and Video Effects. So Effects tab, Video Effects, Lens Correction. Just take this Lens Effect and you can just adjust it a little to get rid of some of that skew. And there's your finished. That. Okay, so next we're probably going to work on putting in the insert uh, for the screenshot. So now we should probably save our project again because we've done a lot of work. So let's just go ahead and save it. And I think Magix does make some backups too, uh, periodically. But I still go ahead and save it at different intervals. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to do the screenshot of the product. So let's see where we want to put that in. All right. Okay, what's next in the box? Okay, what's next in the box? That's where I probably want to uh, insert it between these two points. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it right here and delete these points. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and slide this out of the way. Give me enough room here. And uh, I might reduce the track view a little bit here. Let's go down like that because I'm going to slide it right in here somewhere. Okay, let's go back to our file tab. We could go uh, to the media pool and get our screenshot out of here. So that would be this one, MEP video. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that. I've already named them. Uh, just pull that down. We'll see if that's it. I'm going to say don't adjust. See, we need a little more room there. That's why I didn't try to stick it in that hole right away. Okay, now let's just, uh, I'm going to move this over here a little bit. We're going to have to do some editing on it anyway. All right. And this is the actual video. 
So now let's get out of this multi-track mode and go to single track mouse mode, or actually single object mouse mode. Now you can see what I've got there. I'm showing Magic's Movie Edit Pro. And then the next thing we need is the audio overlay for it. And I've got that here, MEP Audio. Now this is actually just some video that I took with my camera. So we want to extract the audio from it. So let's go ahead, we'll just go ahead and create the audio waveform. I right clicked on it, went to Audio Functions, and Create Waveform. And then after the waveform is created, we can just go ahead and go up here. Now there's two icons right here. One is the link and the other is the unlink. So you can connect two objects together or associate them together with the link button or you can split them apart. And what I want to do is have this uh, video highlighted and then I'm going to hit the unlink button here and that separates the video from the audio. Okay now I'm just going to go ahead and delete the video section by pressing the delete key on my keyboard. So I've got the video, the upper one, selected. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Audio is green. Okay. Now let's uh, give us some more room here. I'm going to go back in multi-track mouse mode and move these out of the way. And now back to single object mouse mode. And I can bring my audio up in there like that. Okay, now let's zoom in again vertically, and you can see the audio. Now I can see right away, I've got this highlighted, I can see right away I need to chop off some here. So here's a closer look. And just take off this beginning piece, and slide that in. And let's see what we got down here at the end. All right. So you can hear, see that. So I don't need that what's next in the box. So I can chop it off right there because I don't need what's next in the box. So I'll just chop that audio off like that. I'm going to slide it here and, and just chop off the beginning of this one so they're the same length. And that's just a judgment call. You can do it however you want it. Okay, and so there's my overlay, voice overlay right here, and there's my video, and if I play it... So here's a closer look at uh, MAP 2015 Plus. They've got a more enhanced interface. It's easier to see now. The timeline's down here, and here's the toolbar. Icons are bigger. So now you can see those two have are together now and if I wanted to group these together I could hit this link button right here so I could select them both I'll just draw a marquee around them let's see like that now they're selected and then I could just hit this link button here now it doesn't matter if I'm in multi-track mouse mode or not when I move one the other moves with it they're stuck together now so that's just how you can do that. And then we can uh, go back to multi-track mouse mode and just move this back into position. And there's our splice. And you can probably see, if I go back to the original one, you can see right here, all of this right here is where, what we just did. And then I've got a few other pieces in here uh, that we can also add. Now we're going to move in the other two uh, screenshots, which was the lens correction and the multicam and volume slider. So again, I'm going to have to make some room. I'm in multi-track mouse mode. Let's just move this out of the way again. Move it way down here out of the way. Now I can use this to get back, see? Use the slider at the bottom. All right, let's bring in lens correction right here. I'm going to say don't adjust. Still got my magnet on so it's snapping to grid. Now I'm going to do the multicam and volume slider and don't adjust. 
and hopefully that didn't overlap over the other one and it didn't so that's good all right now we want to bring in our audio which is right here where it says lens correction and multicam we bring in that it's really like I said just video off my camera with audio but I'm gonna put that in we'll do the same thing as before where we un unlink the video from the audio like that delete the video with the delete key on the keyboard bring up the audio okay I've got to be back in single object mouse mode bring bring up the audio and right click and create waveform and there it is and this audio covers both of these video clips so again we want to go in and just trim the audio let's magnify this a little bit vertically alright we'll just go ahead and trim the audio so so, here's a section. so it starts out with so here's a section and we're not going to trim the top one we're just trimming the bottom one the audio and there we go now let's trim off the end of it that we don't need anymore so that looks pretty good and then we can just go ahead and chop off the end over here pressing the delete key on the keyboard using my slider to move over go back to multi-track mouse mode and bring everything back okay so basically I'm just going to be repeating that process of uh, editing the original video then I go to the secondary cam and then back to a screenshot with the uh, voiceover I'm just going to repeat that again for the second product and and then finish off the movie so let's go ahead I'm just going to do that now and then I'll get back to you and show you what I've got okay I'm going to show you something kind of handy that I think the beginner should need to know and this may be something that you won't hear anywhere else but uh, there are some keys on the keyboard and I don't use many shortcut keys but these are important keys and if you look at the keyboard here they are J K and L and of course space and what I'm going to show you is if you look at the screen I'm going to put this on an insert in the video so you can see the keys at the same time but when I press the L key it will move the uh, transport or the marker will start to move forward let me I've got to highlight the video first okay here we go so here's what that looks like this is the music maker and sound track edition, edition box and you can kind of see it's got a timeline too for your audio down here okay now when I press the K key it stopped at the current position you see the space bar won't do that if you press the space bar right here the uh, marker will move okay. forward and then when you press it again the marker will returns to its previous position returns to where it started the K key will stop it at the current position in addition to that you can reverse with the J key and if you hit it more than once it'll go faster and then you can play again with the L key stopped at current position with the K key reverse with the J key it's going back now stop it with the K key play it again and you can find the exact place where you want to make your splice by just running these keys stopping playing stopping reversing and you can control it right from there so I have gone ahead and put in uh, basically the same thing we did on the first product where we show the talk about the product show the close-up uh, do the screenshot with the voiceover and then go back to the third product and end the video so if you look now at the original one you see they're very close to the same the way they look 
so you should have the skills to do this now. But there is one thing that's different. If you look at the original, and uh, you'll see there's a title right here. If I click on that, put my marker over here, you'll see there's a title on the screen. And that's what we need to do next is put in the title. So I'll just go ahead and uh, show you how that's done. Now this title here looks like that. I'll just go ahead and copy that text and we'll use it to make the title on the other one. Okay, let's go back to ours. We'll shrink this a little bit. Now we want to put the title in right here at the beginning. So what you do is go to the title tab up here, right here, and go to, I usually just go to uh, standard title so that I can drag one in. You can also create one here under general. But I'm just going to go to standard. They have some templates here. I like the large titles. I'll just grab that and drag it down. I'm just holding the left mouse button while I drag it, just holding that button. When I get it down there, I'll just let go of the left button on the mouse. And there it is. And then we can click on it, highlight it, and I'm just going to insert the text that I used on the other one. And I'll hit the check mark here to accept it. And there it is. There's your title. Now at this point you can go back to the general tab or the general category right here and actually edit the color like if you wanted a different color I could go with yellow like that. You can go pick uh, italic or non-italic, bold or non-bold. That's This is bold, that's not bold. Uh, and then they have sort of a shadow effect here you can pick. You can also go into advanced and adjust the shadow manually like you can make the shadow, the shadow uh, wider vertically horizontally. You can pick the color of the shadow. You can also do the same for the outline, change that do various things to it. You can change the background. Instead of black background, you could have white. Various things you can do. And then when you're done, you can click OK. There's also a 3D button here, which I don't use very often, but you can use 3D, which just makes the text look a little more three-dimensional. So that's, that's how you get a title, and it's very simple. And then for the length of the title, let me zoom in here a little bit, horizontally, with the plus key. Now, you can make the title last longer by just putting the mouse over the end of it, and where you see these marks right there, you just drag it to the length you want. I'm going to put it right at the end of the transition. So that way... So you can see as it goes through the transition, the title also ends. So you can also fade the title a little bit by grabbing this handle and put a fade on it. So it kind of fades out like that, which is kind of handy. In fact, you can fade any video by grabbing the handle. There's little handles here. That's audio, so you could fade the audio doing the same thing. Um, Actually, that was video, but you can do the audio as well. Uh, the, audio, the audio also has fade handles where you can kind of make it fade out like this. So there's handles on all of these things that uh, can be used. But that's how you put the title in. Now, if you look at my original video that I made with the box opening, you'll see that I have my own custom-made intro going on right here. So I made that intro myself. Me and John made it actually. And it's beyond the beginner level. It's kind of a fancy thing that we created just for us. But uh, you can use the intros that come with Magics and they're pretty good. And uh, a beginner can definitely do that. So I'm going to show you some things you can do. Okay, let's give us a little room here. I'm in multi-track mouse mode. I'm just going to move the movie over a little bit. Give us just a little room. 
All right. Now, one thing you can do is just under the Titles section, this Titles tab here, they have a thing called Captions. And you can come in here and pick one of these pre-made captions. For example, suppose I picked Waves here. And you can just put, you can put Waves anywhere you want it. I'm going to put it right, say, right here. All right. And when I start the movie, that'll fly in like that. Now I can actually move this around here. Let's let's actually put it so it's right at the beginning of the movie right there. Now when we play it, okay. you can see this fly in. And you can edit these and put what you want in there. Like I could put my channel thing in here, my channel name. Retired Time Productions, right there. And when I'm happy with it, just hit the check mark. Okay, and now when you play it, okay. it fills it in. So that's one thing. See how it flies okay. in, puts the name in there, and draws in the little highlights. So I don't know if you could hear what I said, but it draws the highlights in. Uh, that's one thing you can do. And then if you want to get a little fancier, you can go to uh, Effects right here. And if you go under Design Elements, so Effects tab, come down to Design Elements, go to Intros and Outros, they have a whole bunch of uh, templates here for your own intros and outros. So you can go through here and pick the ones you want. I was just going to give a demo with the Stars one. So I'm going to drag the Stars one down. Now you have to put this on an object. You can't put it in an empty space like you could with a caption. So I'm going to put it on the first object in the track here. And uh, it, says, it gives me a little message here about multiple objects and stuff, but I usually just close that. And it works anyway. Okay. So now, if we go and look at what's underneath, I'm going to scroll down here. You can see where it put it right here. So I'm going to scroll back. Now if we play it, you can see stars flying in, got clouds, fancy music, and then right near the end, there's a title here. And you can also edit that by clicking on, double clicking this small item right here. Sometimes you have to hunt around and find out where the title is in the objects uh, for the intro, but eventually you find it, double click on it, and then, see, it'd be easy for me to just change uh, production here to productions and then I could put retired time in front of it and I'd have my channel name so I could just do that so now the whole shebang will look like this And then it goes to our. So then we've got both things going on there. So that's something you can uh, do to enhance your intros. You can also add an outro in the in the same manner. I'll just shrink it down here. So if we want to put an outro at the end here, what I could do is again go back to the effects and pick the outro for the stars, which was this one right here. And I'm just gonna put that on this object. And you can see it put the two or three objects, I guess it is. And then when we play it, it will look like this. Do you have any further comments, John? No, we'll get to that in later. This... And you can see the scrolling text going up the window there. And then right, and you can fill that scrolling text in 
If you go in there, you can uh, change it, see? You can edit that to be whatever you want. Put your name in there for the producer and, and uh, stuff like that. You can also edit the final ending. Let me go back to that and just play that again. Oh, I forgot to hit the check mark here. But, uh, okay, right there. You see where it says the end? You can also change that. So I could put, uh, thanks for watching there or something. Like that. And then hit the check mark to save it. So now it's got thanks for watching right down. And you can move it around too. Like if it's not centered right, you can move it around where you want it. And that's it. So now when I play it. Do you have any further comments, John? No, we'll get to that in later. Just see you on the tube. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Any comments you want, just put them under the video. And we'll catch you later. So there you go. That's all there is to it. And you got a nice beginning and end. And you didn't have to go to much work. Okay, let's talk about the volume levels of the music or of your voice or of the movie content itself so I'm gonna go scroll back up here and I think we better move this whole business back over um, make sure we multi multi-track mouse mode move the entire arrangement back to the beginning right there so we're all lined up. Go back to here. Zoom out. And let's save the project since we've done all that work. All right, now we're ready to look at the volume levels. Now, as far as uh, changing the volume levels of a, of a single object, like a single audio object, you can just grab the slider right here right click on it actually it's left click on it left click on it and you can move the slider up and down now if you put it on zero right here uh, that doesn't mean that there's no volume it's not going to be silent right there zero is just like the center position and then as you go below zero it gets quieter and quieter and then when you're down here like minus 28 db or something when you finally get down to the bottom it's off so it's only off when you're all the way down zero is normal and then if you go above zero that increases the loudness so normally you would just be on zero and then you can adjust it from there to your liking that's a single object okay let's make it, make it large if you have a video clip that has audio in it, in other words, it's a video and object, a video and audio object combined, sorry, you have two handles. One's for the video, as I showed you before. You can, you can change the video level, whether that video is going to show up or not. Uh, the handle down at the bottom is actually for the audio. Like if I go to this one, it brings up the audio. And the top one is for the video. So that's all those do. So if I wanted to change just the audio of this movie clip, this one that I've got highlighted, I would change this slider. Okay. Well, you might ask, uh, what if you want to change the whole track? Change everything in the whole track. Well, if you want to do that, go to the mixer. The mixer is up here in the corner, right here. Click that. And let me bring this mixer into the middle here where you can see it. Okay, so when we're playing our movie, you can see the volume changing right here. And then we have the audio coming in for the two other tracks. So let me stop it. So you can see the audio coming in for the two the first two tracks, track one and track two. So you can adjust the entire tracks by just moving the track slider up and down right here. 
this is kind of like the mixer panel that a band would use or like a recording studio would use. They just adjust the entire track. In some case that would be the track for one instrument. In this case it would be for voices or music. But as it's going, you can listen. And then when it gets to the audio section... In this box, we think. But we're going to do a box opening to find out. Very exciting moment here. Okay. Now silence them. I can bring it up a little bit. Let's bring up track one. Oh, I got some tape on your fingers. Eh? So I could just use track one. Put so it on. For like, uh, $59, and now you actually get, are supposed to get three throwing in a little bit of track anything. two, which is plus, the main camera. This one does support 64 bit for, just for a little room ambience on. there, or ambience. So, I've got a little yeah, of both. Mostly I have the, the version, camera that's on the table and a little bit of the room. The extra, uh, the... Because the camera that's on the table here, the, the small close-up camera, has the closest audio, sounds the best close up to where we're talking. And then the one that's further away, the uh, camcorder, which is uh, further away, we can use that just to add a little like echo or room ambience in right there, just a little bit of that. In this box, we think. But and because they're synchronized, they both blend in together just fine. So the synchronization was done in the beginning of this uh, tutorial. So that's how you do that. Oh yeah, and uh, you can also adjust the master volume here for the whole production right there. So if it isn't loud enough, uh, you can adjust it right here and master it right there to the volume that you want. I'm just going to leave it on zero. So there we go. Now if you wanted to add effects, and this is a little bit beyond beginner, but say I wanted to add some effects to track one. You could hit this FX button right here and bring up the effects, the audio effects rack right there. And then they have like a, a, a multi-band equalizer here that you can turn on and adjust these different frequency ranges. And then they have reverb. You can add echo right in here. And they have a compressor. If some of the, if some of the audio is too loud at one point and too soft at one point, you can use compression to kind of equalize it. Uh, so there's different things you can do in here, but it's a little bit above beginner level. But play around with it and see what, it's just kind of fun to see what it does. And then I can turn it back off too if I want to. But uh, that's all there is to it. So here's a little bonus for you. It may be a little bit above beginner level, but you might be able to get it mastered. And that's if uh, you want to have like one picture inlaid on top of another, sort of a picture-in-picture, picture, like I did with a close-up of the keyboard uh, earlier in this tutorial. I showed you how you could use the JKL key, and I had that inserted into the other video. Well, the way you do that is you have two videos like we have right here, one on top of the other and you just take the bottom one right here and go into effects go to the effects tab and then go to size and position right here and as long as that bottom track is highlighted like that you can go up here into the preview window size and position and grab it and shrink it down like that so now you see the highlight change there that's not good so we want to hit the double arrow to make sure I haven't changed the upper one double arrow to make sure I cancel anything let's go back to the bottom one alright now we're back to the bottom one and say I put that window say right there alright now when I play the movie so here's what that looks like this is the music maker and sound track addiction box and you can kind of see it's got a timeline too for your up so you can see both movies playing at once you can see the small version of this bottom track playing in that corner and then the other one underneath it 
you should could, uh, you should probably want to know how to uh, go side by side as well so I'll do that so I'll put this one right here and make sure it's about half as big as the screen maybe a little less and now I'll go to the top one still using size and position I can shrink the top one down so it's about half of the screen and put it there and now we've got two that are shrunk and it looks like side by side. So that's what that looks like. This is the Music Maker and Sound Track Edition box and you can kind of see it's got a timeline. And could you have four of them on the screen? Absolutely. You just have to have four tracks and then shrink all four and you know put them in the different corners so yeah you could do four as well so that's the way that's done so the final thing we need to do after we get our movie all made is to export it so the way we export the movie is go up to the file menu here go export movie and then come down through here you see there's a bunch of different formats uh, there's QuickTime for example or AVI uh, what I like to use is MPEG-4 so I'll show you MPEG-4 so I click that go into MPEG-4 and you can select the format you want right here and I usually use uh, 720p uh, HDTV 720p now if you don't see it in the list um, I believe you can display all by clicking here pull it down now we've got them all so there's HDTV 720p that's only 25 frames a second I'd like to have uh, more than that I'd like to have 29.97 so if I don't see one exactly right, I'll just go with this one that's 1080p. It's got the right frame rate. And then I can just customize it right here to make it 720p. And then we've got it the way we want it right there. Also, while you're exporting, you may want to click on the Advanced tab here and check Hardware Acceleration. Uh, this can speed up the process, may make it twice as fast on some computers if you turn on the hardware acceleration. Also, you might want to make note of my settings here that I'm using for MPEG-4. Uh, if you're going to use MPEG-4, this is how I've got it set up. And uh, it's a lot like you would find in the Help section. If you just go in the Help section, you can click that Help button that I just clicked down here and you can see right here the settings they have in the example and my settings are a lot like that example in the help except I've got a 4 here instead of the they're recommended 3.1 I've got a 4 and uh, I think I've got uh, you can just make these the same I've got 25 and 30 but I usually like to make them 6 and 8 thousand right here just like they had it so if I put six and eight thousand in there and the four is fine balanced is good and all that and then just click OK and um, if you want to save that you can click this little thing here and this just saves this format and I'll say export preset and I've already got one here that I made earlier but I'll just call this uh, uh, for the tutorial tutorial or let's just call it toot to be short there we go and I'll just save that now I've got toot next time I come in here if it's not there I can just go down and click toot and it'll bring up all my settings just the way I want them and uh, that's that's all I wanted to show you there under advanced tab because it's kind of important uh, right before you export you may want to check this path right here because this is where your movie is going to be going and this is what your movie is going to be called so if you want to change the name of the movie uh, you can change it right here 
you can also change the path, the location it's going to. You can hit this folder button and pick a new, lo a new location for your movie where you want to export it to. So that way you can find it after you're done exporting. Now I've got uh, export selected range only. Uh, you may want to uncheck that. So I use it sometimes to export just one range. And then once you're done you can click OK. And it sh says there's some empty space somewhere in my movie. You can jump to empty space if you want to or just ignore it. It just means there's a little space between two of the video objects and they're not quite close together. Uh, so I'm just going to say ignore for now. And then it'll bring up the export dialog and start exporting. And when you're done you'll have an MP4 file. And you see my computer is quite fast. I've got one that's a it's an i7, it's got a lot of memory, it's got a fancy video card. So it's pretty much minute for minute. I mean if the movie is is 17 minutes long, it might export it in 17 minutes, something like that. Uh, you can make it faster by turning the hardware acceleration on. So let's just cancel that. If you did want to export a selected range, say you just wanted a section of the movie, say this section right here, place the marker where you want to start, hit the start range marker, and you can see it move in right there, then put the cur cursor at the point you want to stop and hit the end range marker right here and you'll have this range selected. Okay, now you can go back into File, Export, Movie and MP4 and I've already got my predefined uh, format up. Check Export Selected Range and then you can say OK. I'm going to overwrite the movie I just exported, so overwrite it. And it'll only select that range. And since it's a shorter range, of course, it's only going to take, what, one minute? So it'll only take one minute because I'm only doing that one small section. So that's how you do that. And that's how you work the range markers. Now, if you want the range markers to go back to the end of the movie, the ends, all you got to do is hit this double arrow and it puts the range markers at both ends. So those range markers are important too because if they are set in the wrong place you could only get part of your movie exported. So watch those things and uh, they're handy but they can cause trouble too. So watch your range markers where they're located and you can set them like I showed you with these keys right here. Now that our movie is completed we might want a thumbnail for YouTube. So let's put the marker where we might want our thumbnail or where we might want it to be. Let's see, say we want a thumbnail that looks like this right here. We just place the marker at that point and then we'll go back into export movie but this time we'll export single frame as JPEG and again you can pay attention to your path and your name right here and I like a 720p size JPEG and that's about it you just hit OK and then hit continue and you will have a JPEG saved for a thumbnail okay so here is our movie that we just created here and you can see a picture of it over here in the player and this is the thumbnail we created, the JPEG right here. And you can see what that looks like. So now we need to upload these to YouTube. So let's go to YouTube. And once you're on your channel, click the Upload button right here. Brings up the Upload screen. And if you have the current browser, you should be able to drag and drop the movie right into this window right here and then it starts uploading and then down the bottom here there's a place to add a custom thumbnail now this isn't drag and drop so what you have to do is click custom thumbnail 
and then find it on your computer. In my case, it's on the desktop. Okay, once you get to your thumbnail, just select it like this and then click open and it'll upload the thumbnail. So that's pretty much it. There's the thumbnail appearing and the movie's still processing here. And then when it's done, you can go ahead and fill in the rest of the information, like the title here, description, tags, and if you have a channel where it's uh, where you can monetize it, you can you can click click this button and then check monetize. So that's pretty much it. Now, when you go to actually publish it, you can add a little message here to send out to all your subscribers that you have a new video. Just type something in there. Make sure this is on public right here. And then click the publish button. I realize this tutorial has been kind of long. I think it's been an hour and 15 minutes. But I wanted to get everything in it that I thought a beginner could use to make a complete movie and then publish it to YouTube. So I hope I've accomplished that goal. Uh, if not, if I've left something out, you can always post a comment under the video and please subscribe if you liked it give me a thumbs up and we'll see you on the tube